All right, the first bolt broke off. I hope that's no indication of how my day is gonna go. Got a couple loose bolts in here. There we go. Ooh, not good. There's not very much oil in either one of these. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're back out here in the workshop and we got the fireplace going today. It is a cold, miserable day today. So it's a good day to work inside. So uh, we're gonna be working on the Alice Chalmers D17. I know it's been a few weeks and we're gonna start taking the axles off of here so that we can replace the final drive assemblies and look at the brake drums to see whether any of the brake drums need replaced. So first thing off, I, I screwed up, first thing. Um, I put the impact driver in forward and I thought it was reverse and I broke that first bolt off. 100% uh, my fault. So hopefully I don't make any more dumb mistakes today as we're trying to get this off of here. But we're gonna get the little crane hooked up and uh, we're gonna get, uh, the axle supported with the crane and then see if we can loosen that up and pull that out of the tractor. Ooh, studs coming out in that one. I really don't want the stud to come out. So all the studs pulled out but one, and I'd like to have at least two in there when I pull the axle off. So we're gonna try to get this nut off of here. Put a pipe wrench on here. And a cheater bar. One of these days I'll get a vice stand that's actually bolted to the floor. So luckily the stud has a spot where there's no threads in the middle and then that wrench perfectly fits on there. All right, I think I can see if I can pull this off of here. Oh, I'm gonna have to pry on this bar. I? I like it's caught in that one. Well, I couldn't get the final drive to come out. So I decided I'd take this stud out that was stuck. And it appears that it must have been stuck to this stud because it's coming out with it. So I think once I get this out of here, the final drive will come out just fine. Since we're taking this stud out, I'm gonna go ahead and put another stud in down here. And I'm just using that as an alignment to help pull this out straight. So it's going to help hold everything straight as we pull the shaft out. So there we go. It's coming. Oh. You don't know whether you got, you're pulling up too much on it or not enough. There we go. 
I'm off the gear. I think I need to roll back. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha! We got her. All right, we got the first axle and final drive assembly. We got that pulled off the tractor. Now what we're gonna end up doing is we will take part of this final drive apart. We're gonna take this bull gear, and we're gonna take that out of there so that we can get to the shaft and replace the seal that is in here. You can tell it's been leaking oil over time. So that's one thing we're gonna do to this. Now on the other side, this is the brake drum right here and it has actually got a crack in it. And I, I don't understand how this is not in two pieces because that crack starts going across and there is a crack right on the other side as well. But somehow it's not cracked all the way through where it's on the shaft. But uh, that thing's going to be a bear, I think. This is pressed on there, so we're going to have to pull that off and put a new one on there. And I don't have one of these, so I'm going to have to order the brake drum and I'm going to have to order the seal. But... I think today we'll at least try to get some of this apart, but right now let's go ahead and pull the other axle. Height. Only two studs came out this time. That may make it easier or harder. Probably harder. It's moved a little bit. I've got about a sixteenth inch gap here. Oh yeah. Oh, I think that one actually came out a little bit easier. Yeah, I'm getting the hang of it. Well, maybe, maybe I can fit both of them <laughs> on this cardboard. All right, now to take these final drives apart, I think we gotta pop this out. I think this is what you do, you gotta pop this cap off, I think. my understanding the hardest part of this is down in here there's actually a clip you got to take off the shaft down in here oh got it to the side i think now i'll be able to work it off oh i got it so now we got the clip off of here I should be able to drive this shaft out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt back in. And I'm pretty much gonna put the bolt in back all the way as far as I can almost. Enough that I can put the socket on here and it will touch the shaft. Cause I'm gonna use this socket to drive that shaft out. And we're gonna pound away on this thing. Well, this is an eight pound sledge.
it's moved about an eighth of an inch. So it is moving. Woo! Who would have thought I'd need an eight pound sledge to do this? There we go. All right, there's the bearing from this side. All right. right there's a spacer. Right here's our bearing. And this wheel didn't have hardly any oil in it. And this bearing's very dry. And right here, this piece right here, this is our seal that we're going to replace. And then there is the bull gear from the inside. And then here's a little ring that was inside that we had to get loose to take this all apart. So this bearing, I think I'm gonna have to get this in a vise. That bearing ain't gonna come off very easily. So to get this bearing off of here, I think I'm gonna have to use a puller to get it off. <laughs> and that there is the biggest puller I have. So looks like I'm gonna have to buy one that's a little bit bigger than this one. So let's go ahead and take the other axle apart. Well, I can already tell this one's going to be just like the last one. <laughs> and I'm already, I'm denting this impact up pretty good. There we go. Now there's the bearing from this side. You can see there's oil in that bearing. This one actually had oil still left in it. So these may be a little bit better. All right. My socket off there. There's a spacer and the bearing. Of course, the bearing feels a lot better on this one since it still had some oil left in this side. Gear. And there's a clip. All right, we got the, the rear axles taken off the Alice Chalmers tractor. I think that's about as far as I can take them apart until I get a bigger puller. Besides taking the bearing off of there, I also need a bigger puller to take the brake drums off as well. And I need to get my oxygen acetylene tanks filled up because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a torch to be able to heat that up and get them brake drums off of there because they're, they're pressed on the shafts and I think that's gonna be a pretty big job getting them off. So I think that's pretty much all I can do today. So let me go ahead and show you a couple of things I've been working on off camera. So this rod right here, this is what connects your brake pedal to your brake pads. And this was very hard to get off the tractor. I had to use a torch on this just to, to get it out of there. So it's very tight. Now the one on the left side of the tractor, I ended up, you can see I ended up breaking that off. So I'm gonna have to end up fabricating one of these. Now luckily the one that broke is the straight one. So this one is straight, it's 3 8 inch rod. So I'll have to uh, thread the end. And then I just gotta basically put a bend in here with a hole for a cotter key. And then there is also a little, little tab on here that a spring connects to, to pull your pedal back up. So um, that's gonna be a fun little project. I'm gonna have to try to make one of these from scratch. So I have been cleaning up the tractor parts when I have some free time. I've been either using the sandblaster or a wire wheel on an angle grinder. Now the sandblaster has been giving me some fits. It didn't wanna feed the sand. 
didn't want to feed that through the gun. And, and I found that I had two problems. One, it just, it just was having a hard time feeding. And then the other one was I was getting moisture. I was getting water in my air, and that was causing the, the gun to kind of clog up a little bit and the sand to stick inside of there. So I've done a few improvements to try to fix those problems. So for the water problem, I ended up buying a regulator for the sand blaster that has a water trap in it, and I haven't seen any problems since then. Also went ahead and I put a valve on the bottom of the air compressor, and that makes it a lot easier to drain any water out of there as well. So the sand blaster used to use this siphon tube, so you would stick it down into the sand in the bottom, and then it would pull sand up into the sand blaster gun, and that just didn't seem to work very well. So I ended up buying this metering valve to put on the bottom of the cabinet. So the sand falls down the hopper into here and then it's easily pulled into the gun and that seems to work a lot better. So the light inside of this cabinet was very poor and I ended up buying like a magnetic LED work light to put in here and it just magnetizes to the top and uh, that works a lot better. So. Improved the lighting, improved the way that the, the gun works, got rid of the water problem, and everything's been going a lot smoother cleaning up these parts. So as I'm working on the Alice Chalmers tractor, I'm quickly realizing that, that I don't have maybe all the tools that I need to do this kind of work. Um, or maybe my tools, that, the tools that I have just ain't quite big enough. So I may, I may end up having like an impact socket that will fit the, the nut, but I don't have a wrench that big. I don't have any wrenches over an inch. Um, or, you know, a lot of times I'm trying to break these, these free and I'm using a break over bar and I can't break them free so I'm using a cheater. And a lot of times you'll see me and I'm not quite putting my weight into it, right? Well, I'm afraid that I'm gonna break this because this doesn't seem like it's very beefy. So the, this break over bar has got this little pin right here. And I'm afraid that that will break if I end up putting too much force on there. Um, so I think I need like a stouter breakover bar to be able to use. I may need to end up going up to like three quarter inch sockets for some of this stuff. And um, so yeah, a lot of my tools just ain't end up being big enough. I need a bigger puller to be able to pull the brakes off and pull the bearings off. I need my torch. My torch, I've ran out of fuel. I've got that little porta torch. And that's what I started it off with. And I'm quickly realizing there's a lot of times I need a torch quite frequently. So I run out of fuel very quickly. And uh, that torch set just ain't quite big enough. So one problem with the small acetylene tank is it can only flow so quickly. Um, so you can only use certain size tips. So you can only use smaller tips on that small torch. So I probably, I may need to end up upgrading to a bigger acetylene torch set. And I'm also thinking about maybe being able to use propane, use oxygen and propane as well, and hook up a propane tank to it as well to try to use that for heating things up. So that's another option, but I definitely need to do something to improve the torch setup that I have so I can heat some of this stuff up and break it free. But uh, yeah, there's, there's, I'm coming up with quite a big list of tools that I need. So next time I'm in, in like a, a big town that has a home improvement store and a Harbor Freight. So I gotta go like an hour away to get to those things. And uh, next time I'm close to one of those places, I'm gonna end up trying to pick up quite a few things to be able to, to tear all this stuff apart easier and make it easier on me as well instead of struggling with stuff. Because today I didn't have oxygen or acetylene, so I'm using like a little propane torch to try to heat things up just to try to break things free. Um, nothing I showed on camera, but like taking those brake, uh, the brake rods out, trying to get those out. I was using a little propane torch. And of course I ended up breaking one of those rods. So definitely, definitely finding out there's more tools that I can get or that'll definitely make this easier. So that's something I'm gonna end up doing. I'm gonna have to do to be able to continue this job. So I was just looking at the, uh, the tool cart back there and I noticed the head of the bolt that I broke off first thing when I started today. So um, <laughs> great start to my day. It's been a fairly long day today. Um, right about the time when I was about to pull the first axle off, um, Rebecca's parents ended up coming over and then one of our boys ended up coming over. So um, Garrett, his radio stopped working. So I had to like troubleshoot his car 
I'd take the radio out of his car today and found out the ground wire actually came off the radio. We got that fixed, put back in, and uh, spent some time with family. So that's, that's taken up a little part of my day. And then after they left, I came back out here and I started pulling the axles off of this tractor. So it's been a long day. It's uh, probably nine o'clock at night tonight. So I think I'm done. Uh, I think I'm done for today. So I, I do need to get parts ordered. Um, there's gaskets on the bottom here where the pan came on the bottom. I need to work gaskets, seals. Definitely need new bearings, I think, on the side that didn't really have much oil in it that was dry. And uh, brake drums. I mean, there's several things that I need to order for this. Plus get a bigger puller. So, um, so I think I'm gonna grab the parts manual. I'm gonna head inside, see if I can at least maybe get these parts ordered before I go to bed tonight. But uh, I think that's it for today's video. Um, this is probably as far as we're about gonna to tear this tractor down on the back side. So once we get the final drives taking the rest of the way apart, we'll start putting everything back together, getting it painted. We'll get this back part of the tractor cleaned up and get it painted to start putting everything back together. So this is, this is probably about as far as the tear down is gonna go. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for today's video. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. It's just on the, oh. I think that's, that gonna cr oh, wants to crack all the way through, I think. I'm afraid I might have to replace this.